Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, this is a video series on converting the uh, 1 tenths, or actually the 1 14th scale servo that's in the Mini uh, 8 that comes stock. Uh, we all know that uh, the setup is actually very bad. Um, steering can be sticky and stuff, and it's just the servo sucks in it. So I'm going to do a uh, 1 tenth scale conversion to it, and um, I'm going to walk you guys through that for this video. So it may be a long video, but I'm not sure yet, and we're just going to go through the process. One of the first things you got to do is basically uh, snip off everything and make your electronics free. So grab your zip ties and snip those off or if you ever have them tied down or not, doesn't matter. Um, in this case I have my zip ties on so I'm going to go ahead and snip all these off. Just for easier access to wires. And once I have everything free I can remove the ESC from the double stick tape that's on the top plate. And I can basically move stuff around more. I'm just going to hinge these wires over like that for now. So I get more um, area to my uh, servo. Uh, more room for that. And what we're going to be doing with this also is moving the receiver up to the top plate here. Uh, because it needs room for the 110 scale servo to fit. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, I'm just going to remove all this, uh, the receiver, and then get it, all the electronics free. So I have room. So now that I have the receiver removed here, as you can see, there's still some double stick tape on the back there, but that easily just peels off. Uh, so now I have all the electronics free. I'm setting those aside, and the only thing that is attached is the brushless motor and the servo, of course. So what we're going to be doing for this is uh, to remove the servo, we're going to be using a 1.5 millimeter uh, dynamite wrench. Uh, come on, autofocus there. Uh, that works best for these, so we're going to go ahead and flip this over, and it will be these two screws right here. Um, let's see, it'll be this one and this one right here for the servo mounting, so we're going to go ahead and take those off. Okay, so now that you have your servo removed, as you can notice, I'm not sure if this is just mine or not, but the ball ends on this are very tight, see? Like, they don't spin freely at all, so that is part of the reason why the steering sticks, and the servo saver is real junky on this, so... Um, right away you're just going to take out those two screws like I just told you and your servo should just come right out of there and uh, hang on like this and then what you're going to want to do is actually remove your whole servo completely. You won't be needing any of this at all, um, not even the wire or anything so that's junk. It's going to be going away and um, sorry for that noise in the background. Uh, the furnace is currently turning on so <laughs> um, anyway now that we have left here is the receiver here and we have a 110 scale servo. Uh, in this case I'm using this um, associated servo. Uh, it's a really crappy servo but it's just for uh, for temporary right now uh, be, until I get like a spectrum or something like that but um, it's just temporary to see if this will actually work. So another thing is here there is a tab when you take out the servo uh, there's actually a tab holding on this, uh, this bracket or this uh, skid plate here uh, that sits right there. Remove that. You can easily just bend it up and it will eventually come off. You're going to remove that so the whole servo can sit across like this. Uh, you are going to be needing to drill uh, two holes in your chassis and that's about it. You can use the stock holes here um, for the servo as it's being mounted like this. You can uh, get uh, any kind of servo mountings anywhere. So these holes here, these line up with that. So that will work out perfect. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get this uh, stuff here and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, strip off some of the stuff on the servo uh, there is a few things like there's some uh, brackets here you're gonna need to cut those uh, cut the brackets so they'll be able to fit on your other servo um, as you can see here uh, these brackets here will have to go around your old ser or your new servo I just found that out so that will work out perfect so I'll uh, just go ahead and do that remove that uh, bracket and then uh, you'll have something like this Okay guys, so what I found here, instead of using the old uh, servo mounting here, um, as you can see here, uh, instead of using those, I found out a much better method that you don't have to screw up your old uh, parts, because if you were to use this old part right here, you would have to cut it, and it's just better to not to do that, just in case if you screw up on the project and you want to put the stock on back in, you can still run it. So instead, I actually found these lying around in my uh, servo, uh, bucket here. These are just little brackets that basically mount right on top of uh, the servo. Uh, see there's a little hole there and it just basically mounts right onto the servo. Um, the servo mounting will go like this. It will just go on like so, like this. I go over top of it. Let's see if I can demonstrate for you guys. Uh, it'll just go like this. 
and bend right around like that as you can see there and then uh, this is where your screw hole is going to go in, in the bottom of the chassis so um, you just basically screw it in like that and it just works a lot better so um, these servo mounting plates here these will line up really good with uh, if you just take your time see there's a screw hole there and if you just take your time you can line it up perfectly and your servo will just sit right under there and um, it will be perfect so and this the servo, the 110 scale servo, will be jacked up on this plastic piece. So that's what this uh, piece un will jack it up underneath and make it level for the front and rear. So we're going to go ahead and start screwing those in. Uh, you're going to grab your stock servo, um, your stock servo screws that held down the main servo, and uh, get your wrench and actually put them. You're actually going to put these on your servo first. Um, so you're going to go ahead and put these brackets on your servo first, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. So also what uh, I did here is actually I just switched over to a um, Traxxas uh, 2075 servo. Uh, I found that this would work a lot better than the setup that I had before, uh, which is what I was going to be using this one here, but um, it's going to be working a lot better to use a... Traxxas waterproof one, I think they're pretty good servos, so, and it's uh, pretty high torque, as you can see here. That'll work great. I got a Team Low C uh, metal gear, or uh, metal horn on there, steering horn, and um, so the next thing that we're going to be needing once we have picked out our servo, uh, checked if everything works, turn off your system, and then you're going to be needing to remove this whole uh, top plate here, so I'll get, uh, so we'll just... Uh, Start here with the uh, 1.5 millimeter and take off all this whole plate here. It's not really that much. It's only about like 10-15 um, screws or something. So once you remove that, once you have all those screws removed, this plate should just simply pop right off. And you're going to need to be doing some modification to this plate for the steering horn to actually fit uh, in between there. So you're just going to cut a few slots in here and you should be good for that. So um, uh, I'm going to get back to you guys. Uh, you're actually going to have to cut this right here as you can see once you have the chassis plate down the, this part right here gets in the way of the servo horn so you're going to need to be cutting from there um, so basically just cutting from this point right here and from that point right there and then your servo horn should be able to move freely in there so okay guys so once you have this part um, cut right here as you can see uh, it looks like a whack job right now but you can also take a file and file all this down uh, it's the one brace here um, that comes to there and then this brace that goes there so those are the only two that you need to remove and then you should be good for that uh, so your servo horn won't get in the way or this won't get in the way of your servo horn um, I've also found out that you can either use a stock linkage um, if you free up the balls a bit uh, carve off some in the center there or you can use your own whatever works for you guys but uh, for this case I'm going to be using the stock one so um, once I have the servo horn mounted, uh, I'm going to actually mount the um, servo uh, push rod and the inside of the servo horn like that, and it's going to mount right back onto its original place. So that servo is going to mount right there like that. So I'm going to set this aside for now, and now that I know that that's going to work, I'm actually going to mount the servo um, brackets here, uh, just these little L-shaped things I showed you guys before. I'm going to mount those, and um, once you have those mounted, like as you see here, those uh, two servo plat, uh, flat surfaces here, um, and like I said, there's a little jack up spot here underneath, so it will be level. Uh, there's two servos here, two two servo brackets here, and um, you will only have to drill one hole, uh, one hole in your chassis, so you won't really have to worry about that. Uh, the stock hole here will work for the right side, and it should just mount right like that perfectly. Uh, these holes should line up. Uh, you can buy those brackets anywhere at your hobby store, and it's a tight fit in between the chassis, or uh, sorry, the drive shaft and the servo horn, but it will work perfectly. Uh, it doesn't rub against or anything, so that works out good. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and mount that off frame, and uh, it's pretty simple. You just mount it through the bottom. Um, I'm going to mount the one side, and then I'm going to do some drilling on the camera as well. So. Alright, so now we're going to be measuring, uh, once we have these mounted here, we're going to be measuring for our drilling drilling the hole. So you're going to grab your um, 
you measure here and uh, you're actually going to measure the distance between each hole here I already did that so mine is 47.77 millimeters uh, meter gauge uh, these are great these are like 15 bucks at the dollar store or not at the dollar store sorry at Canadian Tire wherever you can find them so uh, it's 47 0.77 inches so now you're gonna go ahead and on your bottom and since we're using this hole already here for the one side you're gonna measure from that right in the center of that and then once you have it eyed up like this you're gonna make your mark with the uh, sharp edge of that and then that is where you're gonna be drilling so I don't know if you guys can see that but uh, this mark right here is that's the mark that I made so it's about mm, I don't even know like two millimeters away from the original hole so once you have that, you grab your drill bit. That's about the same size as these holes right here um, that are original, and you're going to start drilling here. So go ahead and put it in your gun and start drilling. It is a good idea to center or uh, center punch this as well. I already did that, so I'll be good. Just slowly go through. I'll zoom you guys in a bit here on it uh, so you can get a better view. There we go. Just watch out for your fingers for coming through the other side. Slower is better, it will actually take away more metal. So, keep doing that. Now that you have these brackets mounted, um, like before I said, and now you're going to start to mount your linkage here. Uh, for in this case, I'm just going to unplug this here. Um, and for my servo, um, I'm actually made, made a homemade link here. Uh, I had a bunch of these axial uh, ball lens here and this uh, double threaded uh, rod. And of course I had the pillow balls, a bunch of those, they include those in your axial kits. A ton of them, so I made myself a link. I uh, threaded the aluminum horn here so um, then it will throw back and forth and this piece here this ball cup uh, that will actually clip right into the uh, ball cup or ball stud that I just put in there as you can see I drilled a tiny bit uh, bigger of a hole in the uh, uh, steering horn there right above the bell cranks um, so it will just clip right on top of there with that uh, last bit so um, and like I said before this hole here will be used um, so you don't only have to drill one more hole in this whole kit because there's only individual holes here so it'll basically mount just like that and your servo horn will pop right on like so we're gonna go ahead and do that right now uh, okay now that that's popped on uh, this is how it's actually gonna so if you hold your servo down this is how it looks so far and um, now you can turn it on and uh, plug in your servo Let's see here Make sure it goes in the right way and then uh, once you have that, you can actually mount it the way it would be. So it's, mine's going to be mounted just like that and uh, test it out. So um, turn on your kit, of course, to be able to use your servo. And um, so I haven't centered mine yet, but that's how it's going to work. Um, once it's mounted, everything will be a lot better on it. So And uh, it's not rubbing or anything. So that will work out really good. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mount this one side. And I'll be back with you guys to drill the hole for the uh, other side here. Once you have that all drilled out, um, it's just going to take a little bit. You might need to get uh, bigger drill bits as you go uh, to the size of your screw. Then you're going to get a, a bit that looks like this. It will make your screw sink in and then your chassis will be nice and flush. So you're going to do that after the hole. Just go ahead and do that. Just be careful. It will take off tons. So just be careful of that. You don't want to screw up because you don't want to be replacing your whole chassis. So once you have that... Uh, it should look like that, and you can test it with your screw. Um, just grab the screw that you'll be using, and in this case, this is a screw that I'll be using uh, right here, and it should just sink right in there. So we'll go ahead and put that in, and it's nice and flush, as you can see there. Uh, it looks perfect, and then uh, we're ready to screw our servo in. So now we're going to take the servo, uh, and we're going to line these screws up here. So we're going to flip around the Mini 8. I'll zoom you guys back out here. Um, you can take out your screw at the bottom and you can start to mount your servo so you can take your servo like this and um, put it in as you wish or as you had it all set up and then uh, have it set up in the right way 
grab your screw here and uh, the right Allen wrench that fits for it. In this case, I'm using a 1.5 millimeter. So then you're just going to go ahead and screw it in at the bottom, like so. And once you have that fully fastened on that side, you can line up this side and uh, grab your other screw that you need and then start screwing that side in as well and we're almost done this procedure so it, it takes no time at all it's a good uh, good upgrade it um, definitely improves the steering on Mini 8 uh, by far um, I've got um, one of my other guys got uh, a Mini 8 and he put a 110 scale setup in it and it works perfect make sure it's not touching your drive shaft Mine's a very tight fit between there. Uh, it's not going to touch it, so that's good. And uh, it's mounted there, so that's all we need. And once you have all that, you're done. Uh, now that you mounted it, everything works fine. As you can see there, it works great. And uh, you're done. So all you guys have to do now is mount this plate back up on here and make sure everything fits. Throw back all your electronics and set them up uh, the way they work. And uh, that's it for this video, guys. So I'll see you in the next how-to. Peace out, guys.